So, what you need to know, you see the drug class, you see the mechanism of action, if it's uh, the enzyme that forms linkages between the glycan chains, that what you need to know, okay? Specifically for beta lactams, I want you to know about the resistance. The enzymes called beta lactamases, they can destroy that beta lactam ring, essentially modifying the drug. And when the drug is modified, it doesn't work anymore. And you need to know how we get so, for instance, clavulonic acid here is the drug that inhibits beta lactamase. So, if we wanted to kind of recreate um, a chain of events here, look at this. So, you have Anyone remembers? Anyone remembers what the cell wall is made of? Can anyone tell me which two components form the cell wall? Chains of what? Carbohydrates and polypeptides. Say it again. Carbohydrates, polypeptides. Yes, very good. So you have chains of carbohydrates. We call them glycans, right? plus peptide linkages. I'm going to EP, polypeptides. That is your cell wall. The enzyme that facilitates this process is transpeptidase or penicillin binding protein. So beta lactams That a lactam inhibits penicillin binding protein. Beta lactamase inhibits beta lactam. And clavulonic acid inhibits. Beta lactamase. Does this chain of events does it make sense for you? Okay, good. I can only see Rachel now for some reason, but she nods. Okay, okay, good. Make perfect. We have a, we have a resistant microorganism, and that resistant microorganism, beta lactamase, will destroy beta lactam. Okay. Beta lactam will inhibit uh, binding protein. Beta, sorry, beta lactam may destroy beta lactam, such as penicillin. That's it. Antibiotic doesn't work. But if you add clavulonic acid, beta lactamase doesn't work anymore. Penicillin is still active, and cell wall is not synthesized. You see, no, here, see the class, see the mechanism, know it. These are illustrations, they are as good as I See the mechanism, know it. Class, mechanism, know it. So that applies to all the drugs listed here. Um, few things to yeah. biology or so I have a question for you. Uh, let me actually, yeah, we're still recording, so it's good. So I have a question for you all. 
Um, do human cells have cell walls? No. 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 And bacteria do have cell walls, right? Yeah. So what do you think? Hmm. Antibiotics that inhibit the cell wall synthesis. Uh, will they have a lot of the side effects on the human cells or not? No. No. No, you're absolutely right. Yes. This is called high specific toxicity. Okay. It's applied to drugs that inhibit serial ribosomes. I have a question for you. Why drugs that inhibit bacterial ribosomes, such as tetracyclines or aminoglycosides, why do they have also very high specific toxicity and acceptable level of the side effects? Can anyone tell me? Because you don't want them to hurt your normal cells? Well, this is what you want from the drug. They are really good. What I'm asking is, why do they have that high specific toxicity? Why they have acceptable level of the side effects? What's the mechanism? Why inhibition of bacterial ribosome makes them relatively safe? The answer is actually on the screen. Anyone? It stops. Yes. It stops because the protein synthesis, yes. But why periodic does ribosomes are different than bacterial ribosomes? Yes. yes, good. Because eukaryotic and bacterial ribosomes are structurally different. And the drug that inhibits bacterial ribosome will not inhibit. Well, well, it probably will, but not by much. Okay. Make sense? I mean, it's all relative. It's not like yes, no. And here's, I'm going to skip through this. So this is the example of the drug that actually has an enormous level of the side effects. Do you see this, this here, this glass polymixins? Mm -hmm. Look what I want to stress this really. Um, look what polymixins are used for. Polymixin B it is used for topical treatments and wound infections. Polymixin E is used for bowel decontamination. Imagine how how powerful this antibiotic is if it can destroy all microbes in the intestine. Do I make sense so far? Yeah. So it is why well, but these antibiotics, they are not used commonly um, like garden variety pill that would be given you for, I don't know, uh, uncomplicated skin infection or, um, I don't know, UT or something like that. They are like polymixin B is not used intravenously or orally or anything. Polymixin E is the last resort antibiotic which means they are very, very toxic. They have really significant levels of the side effects. Why? What's the mechanism of action for this? Come on, don't ask. What's the mechanism of action? Right here. It disrupts the outer membrane. Disrupts the outer membrane. Yes. And what about the membranes of bacteria and okay? Do human cells have membranes? I couldn't hear you. You keep cutting out. Who me? Yes. I don't know if it's a bandwidth or something. 
try and speak slower. Is it better or not? That everyone else needs to turn their microphones off because I think that they're picking up noise, like it's picking up noises from everyone else while you're talking. That is correct. That is correct. I don't want to mute everybody, but here's the thing. Bacterial membranes and membranes in the human cells relatively similar. Okay. So that's your answer. Not only bacterial membranes are disrupted, but human membranes are disrupted as well. This is why these antibiotics have really, really high levels of the side effects and mostly used topically. I mean, they are not for the widespread uh, systemic administration. Okay. Let me see. Do I have, I don't know if I can have a chat here. But like, if anyone is on the video, just nod saying, yeah, 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 we got you. Or say something. Okay, good. Thanks. Now that's pretty straightforward. Um, for sulfur drugs, things to know. So something that I want to highlight here. So you see this title saying inhibition of metabolic pathways. Okay. So this one. Inhibition of metabolic pathways refers to the ability of antibiotics to stop some kind of an enzymatic pathway. And here's your example. So drugs here, one is bufonamide and another one is trimethoprim. And you have a metabolic pathway. So since I don't have a feedback, I presume that you kind of follow. So you've got um, step one. And both of these steps, so this step is facilitated by an enzyme, and so this step is facilitated by and this step is also facilitated by the enzyme. So what these antibiotics do, sulfonamide competitively inhibits the enzyme one and trimethoprim competitively inhibits the enzyme two. So if you use sulfonamide metabolic pathway here, if you use trimethoprim, you stop the metabolic pathway here. Okay, and interestingly enough, each of these antibiotics is bacteriostatic, so that's the statement right here. But together, when they use together, they are bactericidal. That combination, by the way, is called the Bactrim. Now, two more um, inhibitors of metabolic pathways here. Isoniazid inhibits, you see, mycolic acid synthesis. And mycolic acid can be found in, for instance, mycobacteria such as mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, this is why this is the drug that is used only for the treatment of tuberculosis. And here, diarylquinolones. These folks interfere with the uh, ATP synthase, with the cellular respiration. Unfortunately, ATP synthesis in bacteria and in human cells are relatively similar. Addition of this will also affect the function of the liver, highly metabolically active organ, and the function of the heart. Okay, we're good so far. This is the summary. Before we before I chat a little bit about the mechanisms of antibiotic resistance. Uh, 
Heidi unmuted, so I guess somebody has a question. Go ahead. No, okay. No. Um, two more things. Do you see this? Well, I guess you do see this table. Uh, this is the summary. So we've got classes here. Can you see classes on the right? Yes. And you've got mechanism of action on the left. Now, this is a summary. The actual mechanisms in details are highlighted here. So this is just to make sure you can use it as some kind of a checklist. Do I know what's the mechanism for isoniazid? Yes. Do I know the mechanism for basic tracing? Yes. Blah, 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 so on and so forth. <coughs> okay. Um, now for antibiotic resistance, let me go to the study guide then. So, here, the question is says, what are the main mechanisms of antibiotic resistance? Oh, come on, buddy. You can do better than that. mind. So main mechanisms of antibiotic resistance, right? Uh, and it says you have to be able to describe seven. If you go here, there are eight of them. The seven that you need to know are these ones. I will not ask you about the mini cell formation. Okay. Um, so what you need to know here, am I going to ask you about how many people die every year due to vancomycin resistant staph aureus infections? I'm going to ask you the numbers. What do you think? No. no. Okay. Um, so what you have to know. Let's say I ask you the question. Um, describe um, what is MRSA? Say, okay, MRSA stands for methicillin resistance to Philococcus aureus, and it is broadly resistant to beta lactams. Does that make sense? Describe what is CRE. Carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae, and they are resistant to carbapenems. Okay. I want to ask you uh, things like very super specific things uh, like carbapenemases or efflux systems or um, low affinity penicillin binding proteins. I will not ask you this question. Okay? So we don't need to know the mechanisms on this one? No, no. It's it's too much, really. It is <laughs> I mean, I know what I'm talking about. It is too much. Uh, on mycobacteria, do you think that I kind of want to reiterate um, it is slow growing, which makes it really hard to treat. Think about it. It's much easier to treat the infection that is fast than to treat the infection that is very slow, because when it's slow and it grows slowly, you have to maintain the high levels of antimicrobial drugs in the blood for an extended period of time, which can be hard. So that's one thing. 
Another thing is that the pathology during the infectious process, Jeez. Um, I have a dog running on the, I'm in the basement and I have a dog running on the first floor barking at some somebody. Um, pathology <coughs> is mostly due to your own immune response. Does that make sense? Yeah. To your own responses. Okay. Also know that not every person who is infected. Yeah, not every person who is infected will develop an actual clinical disease. Many people will be will will remain carriers of tuberculosis for the, the rest of their lives. It's very easily transmitted, extremely easily transmitted. I don't remember the basic reproduction number, but it's 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 high. Um, and there are basically three forms of tuberculosis. The primary infection is mild fever. The classic lung pulmonary tuberculosis. Um, that's bacteria in the respiratory tract, mostly in the lungs. So bloody sputum, low fever, um, difficulty breathing, fatigue and night sweats. Uh, when you fill out the form uh, at the doctor's office and they tell you, uh, the form asks if you have fatigue or night sweats, that's what they ask, essentially. Um, X-rays, good way to diagnose it. When tuberculosis leaves the lungs and goes into the system, into spreads to other organs like bones and heart and kidney, this is called extrapulmonary tuberculosis and that's really bad. Also remember that tuberculosis is clinically gram positive, but it's it since it's covered with mycolic acid, you have to use the acid fast stain to detect it. I don't remember the picture of an acid fast stain, I think. Okay. Let's see. What I wanted to say, yeah, we got this, we got acid fast. Uh, last thing, vaccine. Important to know. So BCG vaccine is used in countries other than the United States. This vaccine sucks not effective, I mean, but the efficiency is very low. The main reason why this vaccine is used in other countries, let's say in India or in Russia, uh, because it prevents extra pulmonary tuberculosis in children and it reduces the chances of transmission. Does that make sense? So basically in the states that is, since this vaccine sucks, we're not gonna use it at all. And we're gonna rely on the public health measures, which actually work really good in the US. Okay. Um, and we, we can test a person for tuberculosis if needed, and we will know if the test comes positive. This person has tuberculosis and it's not the test comes positive, not because this person had vaccine when when they were a child. Before I'm gonna cut off the recording, any questions? No. No, good, okay, okay. <laughs>